Wake Forest. We're getting set for that one. And we will be back for the start of our game after this from Natural Light. And brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. This afternoon, Len, the key for Maryland was patience. Is that something Wake Forest has to use tonight? Well, Wake Forest has to utilize a number of things, but most importantly, their greatest asset is the quickness and leaving ability of a Sam Ivey. What they've got to do is spread the floor and allow Sam Ivey to work inside, occupy the weak side defenders with some cuts and some picking, but get Sam Ivey loose inside to use his advantage. The other thing would be to force Danny Ferry, who's the hub of the Duke offense, to give up the ball real early. Send two guys at him if necessary. Now, when you look at Wake Forest, you have to turn around and flip the coin and look at Duke. They're going to have to pressure the point guard. Derek McQueen was the difference the last time these two teams met, and they've got to put a lot of pressure on him. And they've also got a tremendous height advantage inside with all the big people. They've got to go to them early and often to get them off from the right start. Not only was McQueen a problem with 20 points in that Duke win, but Cal Boyd has since come on and become a force, especially from three-point range. So that's a look at our Mazda game plan. Coming up, game one here tonight, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest and the Blue Devils of Duke. The champion Blue Devils have reached the final 4-2 of the last three years and feature, if not the best, one of the nation's premier players in Danny Ferry. His number 35 becomes one of only four in Duke history to be retired. For the Blue Devils to be successful, they need penetration from their guards, and Quinn Snyder provides that. The senior co-captain is averaging eight points per ball game. The most athletic of Duke's players is Robert Rickey. He's come off the bench in nine of Duke's last ten games. He's their number three scorer and second to Ferry in rebounds. Bob Stack's Demon Deacons handed Duke a four-point loss when they were 13-1 and, and still number one in the country. After a mid-season slump, freshman forward Chris King has regained the form that made him one of the top first-year players in the league. Sam Ivey joins King on the front line. A constant for the Deacons the last three years, Ivey's smooth moves enable him to be the team leader in scoring and rebounds. Coach K and his second-seeded Blue Devils and Bob Stack's seventh-seeded Demon Deacons play their season rubber match here tonight. It's the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest against the Blue Devils of Duke. From Atlanta, Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports proudly present exclusive live coverage of the 1989 Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. Brought to you by Pepsi, Buick, First Union, the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Companies, U.S. Air, and by Natural Light. Just about set for game one of the night session. The Demon Deacons of Wake Forest and the Blue Devils of Duke. And let's meet our starting lineups as we go to our PA announcer, Marshall Mann. Lineups for this evening's first game between the Wake Forest Deacons and the Duke Blue Devils. At forward for Wake Forest, number 40, Sam Ivey. At forward, number 44, Chris King. At center, number 33, Ralph Kitley. At guard, number four, Derek McQueen. Guard number 10, Cal Boyd. Coach is Bob Stack. For the Duke Blue Devils. At forward, number 21, Robert Brickey. At forward, number 35, Danny Ferry. Leitner. At guard, number three, Phil Henderson. And at guard, number 14, Quinn Snyder. The new coach is Mike Shushevsky. The officials assigned by the ACC for tonight's game are Paul Hausman, Rick Hartzell, and Sammy Croft. 
So Duke and Wake Forest, their third game of the season, coming up as we take a look at our Buick matchups for tonight's game. And a few changes still in that Wake Forest lineup. I think uh, Coach Stack's made more changes over the last month than maybe anybody else in the conference. Yeah. Well, you take a look at the matchups here, and obviously we know all about Sam Ivey and Danny Ferry on each side. One question mark might be the mental preparedness of Derek McQueen. Uh, I believe recently a childhood friend of his lost his life tragically in a car accident. McQueen didn't practice, so he's going to be a question mark there. Our front page, the Deacons with the end of a nine-game skid against the Blue Devils, and Duke trying to become a four-time title holder in the 80s. The number seven seed has only won four times in first-round games. Wake Forest trying to make that number five. And we're set to jump center and get the evening session underway. There's the series record in the tournament, 10-3 in Duke's favor, and they've got the ball and control the opening tip. Quinn Snyder, senior co-captain, goes all the way on the baseline. Later on the drive, and he scores. Nice start for Duke. Well, good penetration by Quinn Snyder, and as we mentioned at the top of the show, you've got to get your big men started. Duke enjoying the type of height advantage with players 6'10 or over, numbering four or five. You've got to get them ready, and Christian Leitner made a nice move down the lane to pick up that pass. And we get nine seconds into the game, and Sam Ivey has his first personal foul. So Leitner goes to the free throw line. 6'10 freshman. completes the three-point play. So Duke gets out early. Wake Forest with their opening offensive possession. The excellent freshman in the conference, Eric McQueen. Ivy moves on Ferry and loses the handle, and they're going to call a foul on Baker. Again, the other thing we mentioned was that Wake Forest was going to spread the floor, and if you take a look at the when you get the opportunity to take a look at their offense, the floor is spread. Sam Ivey, with that quickness, is able to beat Ferry or Leitner off the dribble, and that's what he did that time. Boyd will inbound for the Demon Deacons. Queen picked up by Snyder and Duke's man to man. Not a good pass, and Leitner picks it off easily. Ivey never had a chance at that one. Wanders their opening offensive possession in Ferry on the other end, the one-hander. Nice touch. Well, even inside, Ralph Kitley is seven-footer and Danny Ferry is 6'10, but Kitley is really no match for Danny Ferry's quickness, particularly inside on his moves. Danny Ferry is 15 points shy of the 2,000 point mark after that opening basket. And 55 seconds into the game, Duke with a 5-0 lead for Mike Krzyzewski. You see, we had close games earlier in the season. With the average Margin of difference, a handful at five. Wake is going to take turns now, trying to get the big men open. Chris King is inside working right now. Boyd around the screen, picked up by Ferry. Pass in low to King. Nice move off the glass. And that's a good move by Wake to alternate their big guys to find out where the weakness is. And with King's height advantage over Bricky, I look for them to go to him a little more often. 5-2 Duke. Pass handled by Leitner. Brings it cross court to Snyder. Nice pass by Perry. Henderson up and in. And Boyd picks up the foul to boot. Well, Danny Ferry is obviously the hub of the Duke offense, and he's usually the one who gets the ball inside when he scores. Everything is fine. If he makes a pass, it's usually the last pass, and it's a score. And they've got to, Wake Forest has really got to get on Danny Ferry, make him give up the ball early. Now, here we see Chris King with a nice move inside. He was able to work his way within that lane using his quickness, but the other players spread. The good perimeter shooters of Wake Forest will be able to spot up in case Chris King or Sam Ivey are doubled up. Bill Anderson completes the three-point play to give Duke their biggest lead of six here early. Queen drives on Snyder, got it down to Kitley low, and now to King. King's foul on the way up. Nice ball movement by Ralph Kitley, not known for his passing ability. He is an unselfish player, and recognizing the team's game plan, he was looking for King all the way. Kitley with a nice baseline move, 
draws the defender towards him. Ricky helps out, and he drops it off to Chris King. Good Kit heads up play. Kitley has started the majority of last year, lost that starting post to freshman Phil Medlin for a good portion of this season, and now has regained it. Yeah. This kid, 34 points and 13 rebounds in that four-overtime job last weekend. Bob Stack called that the most emotional game he's ever been part of and the most crushing defeat as well. And Brad, that's a key because coming off that game, we saw NC State earlier today come out flat, and Wake Forest doesn't appear to be flat. Maybe flat, maybe it's because they lost that game. Duke up by four. Danny Ferry. Ricky, who started tonight after being the first man off the bench in the last, in nine of the last ten games for Duke. Snyder, good penetration, leaves it for Layton. Right now, both teams defensively allowing too much penetration. The guards and for some of the big men passers are really picking out the open man. King, yes. the glass. So the freshmen doing their thing. Christian Leitner has five, and King has six. Barry's just going to pull up and take it. And Chris King can't do that. If Danny Ferry has the ball, there's absolutely no way you can leave him for Ralph Kittley. You've got to stay on him, make him give it up before you return to your man. 12-6, Blue Devils. Kittley out high is going to drive all the way to the baseline and run over Ricky. Seems as though Ralph Kittley with his ball hand and a couple of nice assists inside may have gotten a little overconfident. He really shouldn't be dribbling the ball down there. Here's the battle inside. Danny Ferry trying to get position as Ralph Kittley comes flying by. But nice position by Ralph, uh, Robert Bricky that time. Kittley is probably going to be told, hey, you know, your job is to pass the ball. We've got some guards that can handle it. They should have thrown a flag for holding on Ferry that time. Duke with the ball. Snyder gets it in to Oppenheimer. That's his first basket. All the baskets for Duke have been scored by the big people so far. Early and often. Matches their biggest lead of eight. 14 to 6. Duke. New players huddle. Abdelnabi back on the court after the one-game suspension for academic reasons. Mike Krzyzewski said he lived up to the ACC and the NCAA regulations, but not to the Duke standards, so he sat a game out. And McQueen stepped on the sideline. Ferry gave him some defensive pressure, and the freshman turns it over. Duke. Danny Ferry did a good job of cutting off the sideline. Derek McQueen... Tried to go around him. Danny Ferry gave up the position. And McQueen stepped out of bounds, thinking that he could go around. If Ferry steps out off the pick, just as he's taught, and McQueen, even though some contact was made, it just wasn't enough to have a foul ball. Dribbled on the line. It wasn't McQueen's foot that went over, but the ball did. Silers checked in for Wake Forest. Ferry, great pass to the line. Abdelnabi, who's been living up to the projections for him, uses his body real well that time in screening off the defender. A double-figure Duke lead, 16-6. Siler, nice pass. For stop. And King's got eight points. Robert Bricky seems to maybe twisted his ankle in trying to deflect that pass. But again, Wake Forest recognizing their asset is the quickness of their two forwards. Going to get the ball to them inside. Duke 16, Chris King 8. The pass is on the carry. Has an easy time. Great assist from Snyder. Brad, I think both teams are going to have to start making an adjustment. Everyone's going inside. The big guys seem to be scoring at will. I look for some doubling down by the, some of the guards and forcing the big guys to throw the ball back inside. That's the outside shot. Has Sam Ivey touched the ball now? Well, he just did. And not briefly. <laughs> Snyder comes down one-on-one -on -one with Boyd. Takes him to the hole, misses, and the follow no good, and Boyd will come down. Wake Forest with a four-on-two. Siler will fly on the left side, and he's going to be called for the charge, and he missed the shot anyway. Now, lots been said about the athletic ability and the talent, overall talent of a Robert Siler. Bob Stack can take a look at Robert Siler's ability here and maybe make a decision as to his judgment. If he doesn't make the right judgment in the next couple of times, he's got to take him out. 15 minutes and 30 seconds to go, and Bob Stack sees his team down by 10. We'll be back in a moment. Point lead, their biggest at 18-8, 15 and a half to go first half. And Wake Forest made the most of their field goals. They just haven't shot enough left. The Wake Forest, are, they're getting the shots that they want, but with five turnovers and to do none, 
Earlier we saw uh, North Carolina take full advantage of Georgia Tech's turnovers, and Duke is an opportunistic team. You give them more than their share, they're going to burn you. As we said, Chris King's the only guy that's taken a field goal and made a four away for it, because he's three for three. Barry missed, but got his own rebound on Hustle. Out to Kubek. And Snyder will slow it down for the Blue Devils. Fifteen minutes to play first half. Duke, 18, eight leaders. Well, too much for Ferry, and Duke with their first turnover of the game. Well, there was little room for error right there. Ferry was pretty low on the block, and Snyder tried to lob it over, just lobbed it a bit too far. Carlisle and Medlin have checked in for Wake Forest, along with McQueen, Seiler, and King. Seiler with it in hand. Medlin, pass in to King, almost lost it, but goes up and scores, and he's got 10 points. All of Wake Forest scoring has come from Chris King. And as we said, when they recognize, Wake Forest recognizes the Duke weakness, and it is the man guarding Chris King, they're going to try to exploit it. Last two trips down, Wake Forest has shown his own to Duke. Snyder's going to try to break that from the outside. Missed it. Abdelabi in the right place at the right time. Goes back up with it, and he's fouled by Medlin. And Medlin is actually disgusted with himself. He did a nice job of blocking out Abdelnabi, but the fact is he couldn't get his hands on the ball, couldn't get the handle, and Abdelnabi came up with a gift. But Danny Ferry, nice pump fake. The shot by Quinn Snyder comes off. And again, you see Medlin with Abdelnabi on his back, but he just couldn't get the handle. And maybe he lost it in the lights. Who knows? Abdelnabi, four points. His first trip to the line tonight, and he's short with it. If Duke has a weakness, they are not the greatest free-throw shooting team in the country by any means. Just under 67%. Abdelnabi's second is good. But he has five, and it's a nine-point Duke lead. Eric McQueen to Seiler. They work it around the perimeter. Medlin has it and almost threw it away. Forest having a little trouble against that Duke defense. A lot of people do that. You notice whenever there's a fumble, the Duke players don't drop off. They get right up on you. There's a great case in point right there. Wake Forest does pick up the loose ball. Seiler for three. All good and all white jerseys for the rebound. Abdelnabi does the honors. Quinn Snyder sets it at the point. Top assist man on the Duke team. With 179 coming into this and over 500 for his career. You can see Duke exhibiting great patience. They know what they want to do, get the ball inside. They'll reset if necessary their offense until they get it to their big guy. Abdelnabi sent the pick for Ferry and he got it back outside. Now he'll take it from three point line. And that's the beauty of Danny Ferry's game. If you go inside and he's not open, he'll pass it. Carlisle gets alone on the other end. So he's the first Wake Forest player to score other than Chris King. 22-12 with just under 13 minutes to go first half. And speaking of Ferry, if he can't get the ball inside, he'll step outside as far as he necessarily has to to make the shot. Pass to Abdelabi. He'll come back out to Ferry. That's exactly what Lent talked about. Danny Ferry now with a dozen, and that is 62 straight games in double figures for the All-American. And it's a subtle adjustment here. You bring Ferry outside. If he's not getting the ball inside, you open it up for someone else because he's a threat regardless of where he is. Biggest lead of the game for Duke, 13 points. Carlisle and draws the foul. Carlisle got away with maybe a mental error that time. He had an open jump shot here. He takes, instead of jump stopping, he starts to lean. And um, the defender didn't seem to be quite set. It's hard to tell from our particular angle. Of course, the official's right on top of it. I'm sure they made the correct call. <laughs> Ten times Kubek would take that position and, and think that he was going to get the charge drawn every time. Abdelnabi sits down. Smith comes in. Anderson back in there. Carlisle at the free throw line where he doesn't miss off of Carlisle with three. Junior out of Winston-Salem. You see a 78-plus free throw shooter. That's the second one. 12-point Duke lead. 
Henderson now plays the point with Snyder on the bench. So far, Duke has pretty much had their way. They want it inside again. Kubek walked with it. And despite the walk, again, Greg Kubek posts up inside. He's got a guy behind him. No one contests the pass. And he had an easy shot except for the error. Mike Krzyzewski and the Clippers too crazy about the call. The second turnover against Duke in the game. Queen has a little trouble with Henderson. And Henderson picks up the foul. 11 minutes and 53 seconds to go in the first half. Duke with a 25-13 lead. We'll be back at the Omni after these words. You take a look at the ACC tournament brackets. Maryland with a shocker over NC State earlier. North Carolina advances after downing Georgia Tech by 15. So those two clubs meet tomorrow. And our two survivors of the night session tonight will have the second game semifinal on Saturday. Brett, Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you. You can see Chris King's done most of the work for the Demon Deacons. Ten of their 13 points. They forced five out of six from the field, but they just haven't had enough opportunity. Right now, starting out with a double high pulse, they're trying to find a key to get some other people involved in the offense. We're approaching the midway point of the first half, and there's only been four missed shots as Ivy scores for the first time. And that wasn't a great shot, but it was also a sign of frustration to Sam Ivy. He hasn't been able to really touch the ball where he needs it, and he forced that one. Duke, 10 out of 13 from the field as they bring it down with a 10-point lead. Between all over Henderson. Good battle going on between those two at the point. Kubek feeds it in. Lakers couldn't handle it. And the third Dirk, uh, Duke turnover, that is, will give it back to Wake Forest. Chance to cut the lead back to single digits. Stay tuned for Holly Farms Player of the Game Awards, brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. And Brad, on that last play, Wake Forest seems to have made the adjustment. Christian Leitner lost concentration because he also felt the weak side help coming. Knowing that the lob went over the defender, he couldn't concentrate on both. Maybe he's trying to give it back. McQueen gets good penetration, kicks it out to Boyd, who had a thought. Carlisle will take the three, and he's short with it. Snyder will slow it down for Duke. And that's the guy Wake has got to get on track. Rick Carlisle, normally a great shooter from outside, is only shooting barely 41%. Now Boyd probably wishes he had taken the long shot now. On the other end, Ferry from the baseline. What a touch. Again, no match for Kitley, even though Kitley has a size advantage. Ferry just too quick. Ferry with 14. Nice drive by Ivy, but way short. Carlisle puts it back up. Still no good. And the loose ball comes out on the rebound to Snyder. Well, you can't teach height. And that time, the shot was blocked twice without even leaving the ground. If you could teach height, you would have been teaching me things all year. Come on, push it! Duke by a dozen, but they threw it away. But I learned from you. <laughs> so Duke's had turnovers two of the last three trips down court. Ivy way out of the baseline. No good. And it'll still be Wake Forest ball. And if you want to have a contrast of, of styles here, Wake Forest also has to be patient, just as Maryland was earlier today. The fact of the matter is, though, Sam Ivey is losing some of that patience. He's taking shots from outside. Now, granted, they're behind, but he's taking shots from outside of his range. And it also takes him off the board where he's sorely needed. McQueen and Carlisle come out of the Wake Forest lineup, and Danny Ferry gets a breather for Duke. Chris King is fouled by Leitner. And that's going to be a couple on him. And that's something Wake has got to continually do. Recognizing that Chris King is constantly getting position on Robert Brickey. He's also got a size advantage on Brickey. Wake has got to get every opportunity that they can to look for Chris King throughout the 45-second clock so they can get good shots and then come back on the other end and play some tight defense and limit Duke to one shot. And it's easier said than done, but, I mean, that's the key. Not the only thing Chris King has not done well for Bob Stack's Demon Deacons is miss that last free throw. Now he has 11 points of the Wake Forest 16. You see an 11-point lead under the 10-minute mark first half. Wake's gone into a 2-3 zone again, trying to adjust and keep the guys on the baseline from dominating on Duke end. Snyder gets a good pass in low to Abdelnabi. He missed it off the glass, but Leitner's in great position to score. But if you want to beat particularly a 2-3 zone, if you're able to lob over it, you throw over it, and that allows the other players to get great offensive rebounding position like Leitner. Leitner has seven. He's really been coming on the second half of the season. Kitley, up cross court to Boyd. He'll take the three. No good. 
Donabi, high for the rebound. 13-point Duke lead. Matches their biggest of the night. Ricky, who's been quiet to this point. Snyder's going to take it from three-point range. Well, we mentioned Duke is an opportunistic team. They come down, they're playing patiently and deliberately, but when there's an open shot, they're not hesitant to pull a trigger, just as Clint Snyder did. Duke's got the Deacons doubled. Siler on the other end, and he hits the two-pointer. His first basket of the night. You know, I'd like to see Wake Forest do a little bit more of picking and rolling, not so much with Kitley, but with someone who's a threat outside, because Duke likes to jump out and double-team the ball handler. You can drop a nice pass from him and jump it. Leitner is taking over on the other end he's got nine points so Barry and Leitner the two 610 inside players for Duke are having a field day so far Siler with Henderson close on it got a nice screen from Ivy Ivy hasn't touched it much either good at Duke's defense or Wake Forest's inability to get in the ball Siler to King and he walked with it Turnover number six for Wake Forest. With seven minutes and 47 seconds to go in the first half, Duke in command with a 16-point lead. We'll be back after these words from our friends at Natural Life. Team lead, Brad Nessler and Glenn Elmore at the Omni in Atlanta here in the evening edition of the ACC Tourney. And round one, and Duke is just burning it up, Len. Well, you can tell with Duke's height advantage inside, Wake is caught between a rock and a hard place. They play a zone, Duke throws over it. They play man-to-man, -man, Duke posts and spreads and allows Danny Ferry and um, Christian Leitner to rule the roost, so to speak. So Wake has got to make an adjustment. Snyder, nice drive, had it blocked by King, and that'll help. Wake Forest is probably coming in, have taken the 54% from the field and thought they'd be in better shape, but you can't let the opposition shoot as well as they've let Duke. Siler off the boy. 50 plus on three pointers, but he's missed two. Came in shooting over 50% from out there, and he's missed his two attempts from the very same spot. You recognize Duke, normally a great transition team, is playing it pretty close to the vest right now. And the Blue Devils threw it away. So Duke a little bit sloppy there, and they were a few minutes ago, too. At one point, they had no turnovers, and now they're at five on the night. See Wake Forest over four from out there. And they're the top three-point shooting team in the conference, over 42%, so it's not panning out for them tonight. We've got a whistle and a foul on Danny Ferry. This is first. Well, Duke has made the adjustment, taking Robert Bricky off of uh, Chris King, and now Danny Ferry's guarding him. Ferry a little overzealous in trying to get position defensively. Does a lot of holding and touching with his arms and hands, which is a good idea defensively. You never lose sight or touch or contact with your man, but sometimes you can get a little too enthusiastic. Did it take you four years to learn how to grab the guy's jersey like that without the official seeing it, for the most part? You use the forearm, <laughs> that way you don't grab anything. All right. King, I was going to say, had good position for the rebound, but there was a reason. King will pick up the foul, and Bob Stack will do a hook shot with his jacket. King actually is in pretty good position. A little touch on the back of Danny Ferry. I don't know if that really made an awful lot of difference in whether King was going to get the rebound or not, but you're not allowed to do it. 34-18, Duke still with a 16-point cushion. Fouled. Let's see, was he on his way up? Boyd's going to pick it up. That's his second. Cal Boyd has not had the greatest of starts. Played his high school ball about 15 minutes up the road at Campbell High in Smyrna, Georgia. Played for his brother, in fact, the coach David there. Mike Krzyzewski, whose Blue Devils are the defending ACC tournament champions. Anderson at the free throw line. He's going for one there tonight, having completed a three-point play earlier. You know, Brad, with both teams in one-on-one -one situation, this kind of pace where Duke brings the ball up deliberately actually works to their advantage because they have a height advantage. Uh, Wake Forest is going to have to do something to negate that, or they're going to have to start getting out and running a little bit, creating some opportunities for themselves and not letting Duke's defense get set. That's the sixth Duke free throw, and they hit five of them. And they've got an 18-point lead, the biggest of the night. Doubled up, Wake Forest, 36 
Hawks 18. Siler's going to take it from way out. No good. Short King got this rebound. Quinn, I don't think he shot yet. To the good speed to King. And a foul underneath. Good penetration by Derek McQueen. Abdul Nabi had nothing to do but try and stop him. And we mentioned earlier Derek McQueen is the key to this team against Duke because his penetration allows a lot of people to spot up and get the areas that they can use the ball in great situations such as that. Penetration by a guard always puts pressure on the back line. And the big guys have to come up and help out, and they're, they're vulnerable to fouls. You talked about the fact that Wake Forest doesn't go to the free throw line enough. Listen to this statistic. Coming into this game, Wake Forest had made 31 more free throws. Uh, their opponents, rather, had made 31 more free throws than the Deacons have even attempted. Think about that. That's how lopsided it's been as far as Wake Forest not going to the free throw line as much as their opponent. But McQueen hits his. They don't have the luxury of the Giants inside. They have to play more of a spread game and use the quickness, as we mentioned. But there are times when you have to take it to the basket and you have to finish it off strong. And Wake Forest had been doing that of late. They did it last week against North Carolina State, and they're really going to have to do it here as they apply some full court pressure. They've got to pick up the tempo now and start spreading out the Duke defense. Queen's got his first two points of the night. It's a 16-point Duke lead. Under six minutes to play first half. Barry backs up and that's fly. And that time, Phil Medlin on him. Ferry just stepped back, and Medlin didn't even put his hands up on the jump shot. Maybe he figured it was no use. Danny Ferry has 16 points. He averaged 31 points and 10 rebounds in the two regular season matchups between the two clubs. And another Wake Forest turnover. Good defense by the Blue Devils. That's turnover number seven. And it was a late decision by Siler. Player was open earlier. Siler didn't pull the trigger. Good pass by Leitner to Henderson. He's fouled, and it's going to be Boyd again. And now Boyd's in foul trouble with three. And really, it's becoming no contest with the Duke cutters after the ball goes to the side or inside. Cutters are really making it down the lane quicker than the defenders. You see Leitner playing pretty good defense, good communication there as he moves along with the ball on the help side, gets around Medlin. Medlin didn't even feel him that time. And as a post player, your main strength is positioning and feeling people with your body. That's how you screen them away from, uh, from the pass. Duke five out of six from the free throw line. And this man, Phil Henderson, now four of four. Henderson averaging over 12 points a game. At 17 in one of the games against Wake Forest and only six in the other. And he hits both free throws. So he has seven. And it's a 20-point Duke lead. Their biggest of the night, 40 to 20. Queen will meet Quinn Snyder on top. Because Duke was such an overwhelming favorite, if there was any question mark as to their readiness tonight, all that's been um, allayed right now because Duke seems to be coming out here aggressively defensively and they know what they want to do on offense. King from 14 knocks another one home. And he's got 13 points. More than half of the Wake Forest offense has come from Chris King. Danny Ferry works against Medlin. Threw up an air ball. Good defense by Medlin. And McQueen ran out of room as Leighton cut him off at the pass. Here's Ferry with a slam. And what a way to go over the 2,000 point mark. Danny Ferry, 2,001 career points now. And he has 18 on the night. And Duke gets it back on the other end. So things are going well for the Blue Devils. Well enough that Bob Stack says, I have seen enough. For the time being, he calls a timeout. Four minutes and 19 seconds to go first half. Nice hustle by Leitner right now. Danny Ferry laying back. But the problem with Wake Forest is they're not looking up the court. They're trying to handle the ball themselves and they're turning it over. Four minutes and 19 seconds to play first half. Duke by 20 points. We'll be back at the Omni after this. Four minutes and 19 seconds to go first half. Duke with a 42-22 lead over the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Duke has done just about everything right. Snyder now working against Chile who's in the lineup. And here's Danny Ferry down the hook. Another air ball. Here comes Siler on the run. Siler does kick it out front like they should. 
Ball kicked by Kubak down low. Reset the clock. The point I was trying to make before, Brad, is that you Wake Forest, when they finally get an opportunity to break, people are handling, handling the ball themselves, holding on to it too long instead of kicking it out, putting pressure on the defenders to get back, and that's why they're turning it over. Siler, great inbound pass to King. Missed in close, but Ivy's going to score. Sam's got four. Makes it an 18-point game. But despite the score, one thing we found out in watching Wake Forest, even when they're out man, there's no quit in them. They're going to continue playing their game, playing it aggressively. Medlin's done a pretty good job on Pittman since he's come in, and he almost fought Leitner. Leitner went up, he's in double figures with 11. Slow weak side rotation after the penetration by Henderson. You got to get in front of that guy on the weak side. Well, guys like Leighton will kill you in the pass from the penetrator. Duke matches their biggest lead at 20. Medlin. Ivy in the paint over Ferry. Short. Medlin trying to keep it in. Got it again this time. He gets it to go. That's Medlin's first bucket. Under three minutes to go first half. Blue Devils looking for their 23rd win, the number two seed in the tournament. Danny Ferry missed off by Henderson up off the glass. Henderson's had a good ball game. He's got nine points. And it's those second opportunities for teams like Blue, Bill Burnham. Ivy, tough shot over Danny Ferry. Sam Ivy with six points. Carlisle and Antonio Johnson set to come in for Wake. Leitner had this piece from Ferry, finally decides to take it. Battle for the rebound, a loose ball, and a foul on Kubek, I believe. It's going to be his second. See, Wake has got to dig in defensively. That shot by Leitner is something that you just can't afford when you're down this much to have a guy have a wide open jump shot and the ball comes off the board with no one really covering it. It bounces and Duke almost gets an opportunity at it again. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. First half, the announcers of this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, unauthorized duplication or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you at the Omni in Atlanta, where Wake Forest trails 46-28. Insider doesn't help the cause on this the free throw. Duke with a comfortable first half lead. Smith yeah. tried to get a nice pass into Bricky, and Bricky couldn't quite handle it. Well, that was a bad angle. From where Smith wanted to enter the pass, it's a little too easy for the defender to stand right there as an obstacle. You take the ball down to the baseline, allow the, the person on the post to shield the defender away from the ball, and you slide it right down. Kind of like good thought, but you didn't go far enough with it. Carlisle picked up by Bricky. Sheely outside. This is the three. Rebound. King scores again. Chris King stayed with it all the way. He didn't run out after the shot was missed. Recognized he had an offensive rebounding opportunity. That's one of the strong points of his game. He has a great nose for the ball. Picks up where he left off in that four overtime loss to NC State. He's got 15 points in the first half here. The excellent freshman front in the ACC. Here's another one. Medlin, another freshman, picks off the Duke pass. Duke, the number of turnovers here in the second ten minutes of this first half. King thought about it from the free throw line. Johnson can be a streak shooter from the three-point line. Sheely in there right now because Boyd's on the bench with three personals. Medlin, pass was too much for King, but Johnson picks it up. Here is his three-point attempt. It's too far. Medlin touched it, but so did Snyder. Wake Forest will still have control. That's a good decision by Wake Forest, despite the fact that the clock was running down. They had an opportunity to move the ball around. They figure in this next minute, let's try and cut the lead to 12 or even 10 and get some good shots out of it. They missed that shot. They got the ball back on some good hustle by Phil Medlin. The Wake Forest comes in as the top three-point shooting club in the conference, and they are 0 for 7 from out there tonight. Trail by 16, less than a minute to play first half. Johnson will take another three. Myler. 
They snap that long dry spell. And now it's a 13 point game. It's the best it's been for Wake Forest in quite a while. And of course, the shot clock's off, and Duke's going to hold it for one and look for Wake Forest to dig in, try to play some tight defense, force an outside shot, and that allows a second opportunity, and they can leave here being down 13. Wake Forest on a 7 hole run, so they have cut the gap. Duke will play it for one here with now 10 seconds remaining. They'll start to make their move soon. Ricky against Carlisle. Ricky wants to do it himself, it appears. He lost the handle. And the pass picked up by Carlisle. And the buzzer is short. So Wake Forest with a nice run to at least make this interesting at halftime. It could have been a lot worse. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils go to the locker room. Bob Stack, Demon Deacons trailing by 13. But on many occasions, it was a 20-point difference. As it is, Duke at halftime leading 46-33. The first half of this ACC tournament game was brought to you by Food Lion, by Holly Farms, and by Pontiac. Halftime at the Omni. Again, takes his step back as far as he has to go before he drills it. I would wager that of those nine misses, most of them were from the outside. There's the three-point shooting, and Wake Forest coming in the top three-point club in the ACC at over 42%. They certainly haven't lived up to that tonight. Well, that's a big part of their game, and I know their confidence is hurting right now. You take a look at the rebounds, and I had mentioned earlier that Wake Forest is not a great offensive rebounding team, but the fact is they have eight offensive rebounds. The problem is they haven't been able to convert very many of them. Individually, leading scores in the ball game. For Wake Forest, Chris King's been brilliant, the freshman. Well, Chris King has had the opportunity to work inside and get the ball. You've got to get Sam Ivey an opportunity now to make them a double threat. But most importantly, Derek McQueen, the guy who was so big for Wake Forest in the previous games against Duke, in those previous close games, he hasn't even uh, attempted a field goal, and he's only got two points. He's got to come on track and assert himself. And for Duke, Danny Ferry with 18 points to lead all scores, and Christian Leitner, the big freshman inside, has 11. So that's a look at the halftime statistics. And obviously, Wake Forest is going to have to improve their field goal shooting and try to be a little stingier defensively against the Duke Blue Devils, who have the 46-33 halftime lead. And Ivy will inbound to get the second half underway. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you at the Ambe, along with the rest of the crew. And a long day for a fun day, and not a good way to start the second half. Cowboys really had a rough time of it tonight. And that's just plain lack of concentration. Cowboy had the pass thrown to him in good shape, took his eye off it, because he probably thought about what he was going to do after he caught it. But Wake Forest actually, had they been able to score to open up the second half, the 11-point difference would look pretty good to them. Instead, they get it right up on the turnover. Ricky drives and scores. That's his first basket. Robert Bricky giving Chris King a little bit of his own medicine. King had, King had victimized Bricky a couple times on one end. Bricky takes him outside and beats him off the dribble. Bricky can get up in the air. Here's the lob to King. And again, payback is uh, half of this game. And what King does is what Bricky normally does. Nice lob pass. The way you stop that, though, is that you have to pressure the passer so he can't see to make that pass. 13-point Duke lead. 20 points on a million occasions. Nice defense by McQueen. They're going to call a jump ball on Henderson's drive. And the possession arrow to Duke. You take a look at what Chris King does in this opportunity. You see there's plenty of room between Snyder and McQueen. McQueen can see that pass nicely and convert it. And you've got to pressure a guy who's passing it in order to stop a lob. Now, Ricky's come to life offensively in the second half. Back-to-back -back buckets for Duke and a 15-point Blue Devil lead. Ivy drives on Leitner, and the foul's going to be on Leitner. That'll be his third. Well, Christian Leitner thought that he had gotten good position, and Sam Ivy tripped, but he tripped over Leitner's feet, and I don't know if you can penalize a guy for having size 16. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the group on the court right now. Leitner, the freshman for Duke, and three freshmen out there for Wake Forest, so there's some of the future of the ACC on the floor right now. McQueen, one of those freshmen, only starting backcourt freshman in the conference. Guarded by a senior, Quinn Snyder, who's doing a little talking to him right now. There's a five-second call. That's a good call. Derek McQueen 
wasn't aware of the fact that he never really gave up his dribble and he dribbled down to the baseline and back out to the top and was closely guarded. Snyder, one of the top man and uh, men in steals in the conference and over his career at Duke. Virtually call that a steal and a turnover on the other end with the offensive foul on Henderson. And Henderson trying to make his way to the basket was very closely guarded himself and he tried to ward the defender off. Mike Krzyzewski thought a lot of that call. Although his team has really done well. 15 points up. And if you watch the way far offense, a lot of the players making cuts break open wide open and the guys don't pass the kick. Talked about Snyder is one of the top steel men in the conference, and he showed why there. Snyder's got five. And it's a 17-point lead with just over 18 minutes to go in the ballgame. A steal like Snyder's is a result of hesitating when you're passing the ball to someone who's open. Gives the defender just a split second to recover. And there's another one. This time, Ricky. He's going to beat King to the hoop. Another hesitation by the Wake Forest passer. Robert Bricky recognizes that and steps into the passing lane. Time out time for Bob Stack and Wake Forest. 17 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the game as we take another look. There's so many players break open quickly enough, and the Wake Forest players are just maybe a split second behind and recognizing the open player, and Bricky stepped right in and made his patented backward dunk. Just two minutes and 17 seconds into this second half, Duke has spread it out to a 54-35 lead. Wake Forest made a nice run at the end of the first half to make it a 13-point game, and Duke turns around and goes 8-2 to start the second half, and now has a 54-35 lead. A couple mental lapses by Wake Forest converted in the back. Just like this one. Prince Snyder has given Derek McQueen now all kinds of fits. And you look at the turnovers and the points resulting from those turnovers, and you see that Duke has had the better of it on both ends. You see Derek McQueen, you really have to wonder if his head is in this game because of the tragedy he's suffered. The concentration level seems to be down. Ball out to Duke. Barry will inbound. As Len mentioned, Eric McQueen, who lost his best friend from high school, and played very little, uh, practiced very little, rather, this week. Perry in low, misses. That's a rarity. King pulls off the rebound. King has been the Wake Forest offense tonight. Hedlund drives on Leitner and leaves it off to Quinn Snyder. Nice pass. <laughs> Well, you know, it gets frustrating. Uh, Medlin wants to do so much, but yet when he gets sealed off there, he's got knows he's got to give the ball up, and he just rushed. Six second half turnovers against Wake Forest now. On the other end, Medlin, who I'm sure is still upset with having turned the ball over, fouls Danny Ferry. Well, in this particular case, it's a back pick. Chris King doesn't call. There's another pick Medlin's got to run into. And to add insult to injury, Ferry gets the ball. Medlin gets no help, and Ferry's fouled. And that's something that he's going to get a pat on the run for at least trying. But it's something that Wake Forest has been at fault at all game. They haven't been helping out, and the ball goes down low. Danny Ferry turns and fires and has his first basket of the second half and his 20th point of the night. You got to run, throw someone at Danny Ferry, double team, and take your chances with an errant pass or having someone seal up. But if you let him go one on one, particularly on Kitney and Medlin, you're committing suicide. Tyler throws up a bad shot, but Boyd pulls down the turnover. Kelly drops it off the ground, scores, no basket, I don't believe. Let's see. Foul's going to be on Kitley. No basket. Well, Kitley is hesitant to put the ball on the floor and get good rebounding position. Here he takes off a little too soon. Danny Ferry is able to step right in. Kitley gets the ball, maybe turns his back and backs in a little bit to force the defense to adjust. Maybe he can hit somebody that's open, or maybe he can make a nice move towards the middle. But just to run and try to run right over Ferry, because you know Ralph Kitley's not going to jump over Danny Ferry. Danny Ferry leads Duke in charges taken, so he holds his ground well. Somebody wrote the paper this morning, why doesn't he block more shots? He's 6'10", but he holds up pretty well down there in the paint. Another turnover for Duke. Back comes Wake Forest, but they trail by 21 with 16 minutes to play. Chris King. Go right back over to the Blue Devils. 
Uh, Wake Forest bench is looking for a foul call, but there's no question about it. Chris King just lost the handle on that. But getting back to the point you were making about, you know, why doesn't Danny Ferry block a lot of shots? Well, it's a turnover getting a charge, and it also enables sometimes good shot blockers, if they know how to take the charge, to get more opportunities. Because now a defender, knowing this guy will take a charge, will take off a step in to avoid it. And you create that space that allows the good shot blocker to go up and block it. Abdul Nabi got a great pass, missed in close, got his own rebound, and tipped it in. Dixon looking for that play all day, trying to get Abdelnabi off on track, trying to lob it over the defense. You know, it's a good move by Abdelnabi and blocking the defender away. This 23-point lead, the biggest of the night for Duke. Chris King yeah. the glass too hard, got his own rebound, may have shoved Andy Ferry to get it, missed the second try as well. And Ivy and Kitley can't handle it on the far side, so it goes back over to Duke. It seems right now that Wake Forest is overmatched, not only physically, but mentally as well. Things aren't going their way. They're not able to hold on to the ball um, when it's passed to them or even rebounds coming off the board. And unfortunately, when you have a situation like that, you know, maybe it's good to go to your bench a little bit, give some guys with a fresh outlook an opportunity, and let the guys who are playing sit on the bench and, and survey the situation. Great point. If you're physically overmatched, you've got to have your head in the game, and neither is working for Wake Forest as Kitley fouls Ferry. That's three on Kitley. Don't forget our second quarterfinal matchup, Clemson and Virginia. And anybody you talk to in town today seems to think that that is maybe going to be the best game as far as the closest game of day one. But then uh, keep in mind, we have a few surprises already, including 71 49 Maryland. And a 15-point blowout, North Carolina over Tech in a game that really wasn't that close. Danny Ferry, 20 points, make it 21 now. That's his first trip to the free-throw line, where he's a 77% free-throw shooter. You see enough of these tournaments, one thing you, you learn is that you don't make predictions. <laughs> yeah, we had guys betting ranches earlier. They didn't have the ranch to bet in the first place. Well, was someone else. <laughs> That's the key. you got to bet somebody else's ranch or money. Turnover, Wake Forest. Nice job by Davis defensively. Well, what Duke has done, they've gone to their bench, and they've gotten guys who have come in and kept up the pressure defensively and kept up the intensity. Perry's going to get a breather. Leitner comes in for him. Quinn Snyder goes out. Abdelnabi, Smith, Henderson, Leitner, and Davis. That's the five out there right now for Duke. Carlisle, Boyd, Seiler, Ivy, and King for Wake Forest. Smith has played very little tonight. Nice pass in low to Leitner. Leitner's first basket of the second half. He got 13 on the night. At the 14 and a half minute mark, 17 point difference. Wake Forest just can't get their offense on track on only two points this half. point difference make it 27. And King has been the mainstay for Wake Forest on the other end. He's got a chance for a three-point play, and he can hit 20 if he hits his free throw. Abdul Nabi picks up the foul. His second personal, a third team foul of the half. Bob Stack wondering what he could have done to prepare Demon Deacons a little better. Sometimes you just don't know. We talked to Bobby Kremens outside after Tex lost to North Carolina, and I know he uh, had no clue what went wrong. He says maybe he should have called timeouts earlier to try to slow down North Carolina in that second game this afternoon. Jim Valvano, I'm sure, is wondering what went haywire. You know, a number of theories. You know, yesterday in practices, you see Maryland go through a light workout, very loose, just shoot around, and you see Wake Forest go hard and Georgia Tech go hard. Wonder maybe they left their game on the practice floor. They were up too high in practice to get to the game and they kind of flattened out or tightened up. His foul on the way to the hoop. Davis is going to pick up that foul. That's his first. Ivy's been relatively quiet. Three field goals in the first half for six points. Well, this game notwithstanding, you have to look at Sam Ivey and say that he's accomplished an awful lot. He hasn't played with uh, the greatest of winning teams, but yet he's always done his job. He's always come to play. I believe he's 
started every game that he's been in as a Wake Forest Demon Deacon, and that's uh, a, a, maybe a tribute to the fact that this is a guy who has great desire. And only the seventh player in Wake history to have scored 1,000 points and have 500 rebounds as a junior, so he'll be back. Leading score and rebound, as you saw, Sam Ivey hits the second free throw. He's got seven, but it's 64-39. Tyler rides Davis all the way down the court. Smith on top, Carlisle will guard him. Wake Forest in the man-to-man. -man. Smith outside. Two-pointer. John Smith's first, uh, first basket. And it's 66-39, a 27-point push. The biggest lead of the night. Nice defensive game by Leitner, but it's picked up by King. Boots shot didn't go. And it'll be Duke's ball out. Well, it's good to see that Duke, despite their humongous lead, is still playing hard defensively. And that's something that just becomes habitual. You know, you can't turn it on and turn it off. This defense has got to be a constant, and it'll always keep you in game. And just because you've got a great lead doesn't mean that you can let down because it carries over into the next game. You may be in a close game. you still got to be able to have that defense constant. They sat down, Bricky, Snyder, and Ferry. They come back in, and while they were on the bench, Duke extended their lead. That just tells you that they've got some people they can go to. Carlisle drives into the left hand, and the shot's good, and the foul will be on Danny Ferry. That time he couldn't draw the charge. He looked at Carlisle that time. He really, David Carlisle got involved in a little bit of the offense by running on this semi-fast break. And again, he's a guy who's got tremendous athletic ability. He's a nice outside shooter. He's a, he's got strong moves to the basket when he gets an opportunity to put it on the floor. And you just wonder why he's had such difficulty this year. Maybe he has a loss of confidence when things don't go well. Again. Started a lot of games with one of their top outside shooters, as I mentioned, and all of a sudden, they've really done more shuffling probably than lineup for most teams. Lakner got loose, and he's got 15. You have to wonder, you saw Chris King fly through there much too late to get that pass. You wonder if they're getting kicked out top, and if they are, why aren't the way far players talking or helping out there? King of the paint is fouled. Smith got him on the way up. So Chris King's going to go to the free throw line, where he is four of five tonight, hitting 80% on the evening. And he's got 20 points tonight for Bob Stack's Deacons. Well, Bob Stack right now has got a coach. Even though Cal Boyd, the lone senior, is out on the floor, he's really got a coach for next year. And in this particular game, he's got a hard encouragement for some of these guys, yell instructions keep their heads into it and not let them lose the confidence to get down. Sure, you've got all summer to think about this game, but the fact of the matter is, you don't want to leave in total embarrassment. You want to leave hustling and on a good note to give you an uplift going into the next year. Three of Bob Stack's recruiting classes, part of this team now. Ricky, the pass to Ferry. Let's see what he does with it. Misses the shot. Ricky, nice position for the rebound. And tips his own miss in. He can get up in the air, can he, Len? Well, Robert Ricky, people always say he's a great athlete, but he's also got to have the intelligence to get good offensive rebounding position. Wake Forest frustrated on the other end with another turnover, and Duke has matched their biggest lead of the night with 11.46 to play. The Blue Devils 70, the Demon Deacons 43, back after these words from our good friends at Budweiser. There you take a look, 43 points, the largest margin of victory as Terry Holland's Virginia Cavaliers beat Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils in that one a few years back, and now a 27-point difference for the Blue Devils, this time on the positive side against Wake Forest. 70 to 43, 11 and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. Right in front of us, you got a nice opportunity to see the battle between two premier players in the ACC, Danny Ferry and Sam Ivey. And Sam Ivey, regardless of the score, he's not giving any quarter. One hand hook by Ferry doesn't go in and out, and Johnson will pull off the uh, rebound. McQueen lobs into King. King almost got too low. 
but he somehow one-handed it up and in. Well, that's excellent concentration by Chris King. He kept his eye on the basket, even though his body was starting to fall out of bounds. And those are all good habits, regardless of the score. You got to continue to do the good things. And he buried just badly again. Duke has cooled off just a bit, but Wake Forest is still only four of nine in this half from the field. So although they have cooled down that 67% Duke team of the first half, they've caused a few of these as well. Sam Ivey strong inside, does a good job when Danny Ferry keeps his feet and doesn't go for any of the pump fakes. Danny Ferry's going to get a rest. Abdelabi comes back in. He's got Metlin on the inbound. Two back on McQueen. McQueen really offensively, and he walked with it. Derrick's having all kinds of trouble. The two mistakes on that one. Derek McQueen didn't give the play that was setting up an opportunity. He had Chris King fronted and had an opportunity to lob, but he couldn't wait for Phil Medlin to clear. And then he takes the ball in the traffic with nowhere to go. Remember, McQueen averaged 15 points and five assists and three rebounds a game in the two previous meetings. So definitely an off night for him. Ricky is fouled, I think, by Johnson slicing through there. Let's see who they're going to call out. Johnson picks up his first. Bob Stack in his fourth year at Wake Forest. And Mike Krzyzewski in year nine. You have to look at the lineup out there for Duke. Krzyzewski doing a nice job of shuttling players in and out, trying to keep them on the start and run the need them as we get into the ACC tournament. Throwback goes up, and he's fouled. Duke kept it alive with the offensive rebound a couple of occasions there, and Snyder tried to sneak one in. Here's the Abunabi wide open. Nice recovery by Medlin. The Kubek is right there after the ball is deflected off the backboard. Carlisle with the personal foul. That's his first. And at the free throw line is Greg Kubek, a sophomore out of Clifton Park, New York. He doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to empty his bench wholesale, even though he's got uh, like a 30 some odd point lead right now. He doesn't want to do that and not really have anybody sharp, not playing enough minutes. He doesn't want to wear him down and go for the kill, even though he's been on the, the worst end of uh, the biggest margin of victory on, by Virginia. He may be on the good end of it this time. He wants to find balance here. He wants to make history on both ends and keep his guys sharp for the future. They match their biggest lead. It's 27. Whistle a foul on Snyder. That'll be Quinn Snyder's second foul. 27, huh? That's why I'm a lawyer. I was going to say, it's a good thing you went into law. <laughs> you were, I, had a, I had a hard time seeing that. If you were an accountant or something, we would have had to put you out of your misery already. Just over 10 minutes to play in the ball game. I did it once already, this game, too. I had him up 17, and it was 27. I, yeah. <laughs> Carlisle at the free throw line. I wasn't going to miss <laughs> We know one thing. He has six points. And make it seven now. He's... Three of four from the free throw line. Carlisle, a junior out of Winston-Salem. This will put him right about on his average as he hits the second free throw. 25-point Duke lead. Antonio Johnson, nice defensive play against Henderson. Forces a Duke turnover. who's had trouble with Quinn Snyder tonight. Pass to King. He double team down low. And keep the ball high, Chris, otherwise it will get slapped away from him. He has been the one bright spot tonight for Wake Forest, Chris King. Pass to King. He's fouled on his way up. Now that time, it, earlier we mentioned how McQueen didn't allow the play to develop when the player had a defender fronting him. That time McQueen allowed the play to develop, had patience and dropped it in. Jim Belvano's club having lost today as Mike Krzyzewski apparently on his way to his 10th tournament win will move past Belvano and a couple behind Terry Holland. Of course, Holland's club playing tonight. 
Danny Ferry, 22 points, five rebounds. And the MVP a year ago in the ACC tournament. Who knows, maybe he's headed in that same direction here in 89. King has missed a couple of times from the free throw line. He has 23 and 24 points. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils, number one in the country for a long time at the beginning of the season, and then they lost a game. They were 13-1 and one in Wake Forest. They actually handed them their second loss, and they officially were bounced from the number one position the following Monday morning. Abdul Nabi clears it around King. Goes threw it away. Very nice job of catching that one. Luke spreads it out. There's 9.15 to play. And a 23-point lead. Down to 20 on the shot clock. Ferry takes Medlin up and leaves a nice pass in low for Abdelnabi. And the Duke bench jumps up and applauds. They've got to be satisfied with that play because at this point in time, they're playing to get better. They're playing to be more cohesive. And in a situation where you move the ball around, everybody touches it, you get some nice cuts, then penetration and dish off. It's just a pretty thing to see. Bob Stack is wondering where his Wake Forest team is that beat Duke once and lost to them by only six the other time at Cameron. Abdul Nabi, a good night with 11 and 5. Abdul Nabi with seven points this half and 12 on the night. Approach the nine minute mark. Carlisle hits one from the outside. It's a two pointer. Anytime you see a jump shot, it seems that you're expecting it to be a three, so we have to find that for you at times. 75 51 Duke. And McQueen ran over Snyder, or was it the other way around? Let's see. Now they're talking about it anyway. And the officials wisely step in as we look at some other scores around college basketball. Number one, Arizona in the Pac-10 tourney. An eight-point winner over Washington State. Georgetown, well, they've got a 25-point game going over B.C. Georgia, surprised that they are leading Florida 41-30. They play so badly and then won their first-round game yesterday. South Carolina wants to get in the NCAA tourney. And George Felton thinks they can if they win a couple of games in the Metro. They lead by two at the break. And here it's 75-51 with 8.44 to go. And after that little confrontation between Derek McQueen and Chris Snyder, Bob Stack wisely asked Derek to come and take a seat next to him for a while, get a breather, and um, take some stock as to what's going on out there. Well, the foul is on Medlin, apparently, away from the ball. The collision, actually, with Snyder and McQueen and the words that followed. And at the free throw line is Quinn Snyder. Snyder, a three-pointer in the first half and one field goal in the second, five points. Snyder hits the free throw. 6-5 senior, a 6-3 senior, excuse me. He's had his highs and lows this year. And so have other Duke players in the team itself. There's a period of time. That you know, but the fact of the matter is, they have shown remarkable consistency throughout the year, and they never give up on defense. And that's the thing that we mentioned before. It's got to be a constant for a successful team. You can improvise when you can jump that high. And he's the guy that... Uh, Bob Stack and his staff look forward to coaching and, and making a great player out of because he's got such talent. You just got to get him making the right decisions. Major reconstructive knee surgery last year, so the fact that he doesn't get up as high and puts the kind of moves on that he did the last trip down the court kind of amazes you. Danny Perry picks up his third foul. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go in the game. And talk about a nice decision. He recognizes he's got a big guy on him who does not have the quickness to stay with him, and he just puts it on the floor and barrels to the basket. Siler's got about as much equipment on that left knee as you're going to get. Danny Perry's foul sends Phil Medlin to the free throw line. 
And a lane violation, I believe, on Siler. So there goes a wasted opportunity from the strike. I didn't quite catch it, but it appears that maybe Siler moved back onto the lane after the player got the ball, and you're not allowed to do that. He kind of tried to muscle his way around Henderson. Henderson looked at the officials to say, hey, I had my spot here, and they blew the whistle, and Medlin doesn't get his free throw. Come on, Dan. Do it, Chris. Davis, the paint to Danny Ferris. Tough shot. He's fouled by Ivy. Danny Perry with 24. Now, I don't I don't think anyone on the Wake Forest staff would have a problem with a foul, but it was just a silly reach foul by Sam Ivey. It wasn't one that really amounted to much, and he allowed Danny Perry to get the ball off. I mean, if you're going to take the chance to reach in, you've got to get a hand on the ball. You know you're going to get caught for a foul and get the ball clean. Perry, don't let him get it up. Perry misses the free throw, but Leitner keeps it alive, and Duke, with a 25-point lead, maintains possession with 7.45 to play. Danny Perry, the number two active scorer in the ACC behind Tom Hammond. Great pass to Davis. He missed in close. Back come the Demon Deacons. Cal Boyd's had a rough night in his final game in a Demon Deacon uniform. He's playing in his hometown, and I know he wanted to play better than he has. King misses the J, and a foul underneath. Looks like it's going to be on Siler again. Robert Siler trying to crash the boards. Just gotten... Uh, the way I believe it was either Phil Henderson he just jumped over his back but you mentioned Cal Boyd here one of the things that hurt him was the fact that Duke put so much pressure on the shooters outside in the area and recognizing Cal Boyd is hot ACC leader in free throw in a three point field goal percentage they really rush him and force him to put the ball on the floor they don't allow him to get set and that's his game getting set and shooting it. Ricky has had nine points in each of the two meetings between these two clubs, and he has nine now on the night, all in this half. Averaging over 11 a game. There you see a season average, and matches his output from the previous two games, and now betters it as he's in double figures all in this half. Seven minutes and 25 seconds to play in the ball game. Our first game of the night caps here, and Duke has a big 80-53 lead. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for Holly Farms Player of the Game Awards, brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. 27-point lead for Duke over Wake Forest. Chris King has 25 points. The other Deacons have 28 tonight, so he has been their offense. There hasn't been enough of it. Carlisle, Ivy, over Ferry. Got his own rebound. Nice feed in low to King. You talk about him, and he puts another one in. You got to give credit to Sam Ivy, who went after his missed shot. And the unselfish player that he is, he recognizes he's not scoring his average, but he was still willing to give it up to a teammate who had a better shot. Good play. 27 for Chris King. Just under seven minutes to go. Nice drive. Ricky, look out. You hope everyone's all right after that little bit of acrobatics. You need a net if you're going to do that. Well, Carlisle's definitely beaten off the dribble, but Siler comes along in nice shape from the weak side. Clearly an offensive foul, but Robert Bricky got up so high, that was a long way to tumble. Siler had to take the brunt of it as you see him get his position. Youch. It's lucky for Robert Bricky that Robert Siler was there to kind of break his fall because it could have been a little more serious there had most of his body hit the ground. 80 to 55. Duke, another Wake Forest turnover. Laker picks it up, gets it ahead to Henderson. This time he makes sure. And it seems like, just like in a tennis game, Wake Forest has made an awful lot of unforced errors, fumbles of the ball, throwing passes away. Uh, it's just a shame that they weren't able to play a game without that. You wonder if it's tightness or lack of concentration or being flat or what. Ivy's 15 footer, no good. Davis the rebound. Yeah, they've hit the net enough times tonight, haven't they? Six minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Ferry, brilliant again tonight, as always, it seems. Nice job defensively by Ivy. Knocked it away. It'll be Duke's ball. And Abdul Nabi and Kubek come back in for Duke. Antonio Johnson and Phil Medlin will give Carlisle and Ivy a breather. Duke on their way to the semifinals tomorrow against the winner of our second game tonight, that being 
the Cavaliers of Virginia and the Clemson Tigers. The Duke now is showing multiple of offense in the last few trips down. They're more or less using this as a practice session right now, making sure that they're clicking on all cylinders going into tomorrow's semifinal game. Chris King gets it ahead. Siler loses control. Lost it out of bounds. That is 22 turnovers. So as we saw in the second game this afternoon, Georgia Tech was in the 20 turnover area as well. And you just can't have that many against a good club and even have a prayer. 27 point Duke Lee. Danny Ferry's got a little room in the lane. Going to kick it back out to Kubek and slow it down. Now Boyd, I think with a blocking foul, that's going to be four on Boyd. Four fouls and no points for Cal Boyd. One and, one. and Bob Stack, as Len said earlier, coaching for next year and looking ahead to next year. Danny Ferry sits down. It might be the last we've seen of him tonight with 5-12 to play. And he's got 24 points as he goes to the new bench. Anderson at the free throw line. Hasn't scored in this half. He still has it. Siler got the rebound. Siler drives on Davis. The flying jumper, no good. Chris King again, but he had it knocked away by Smith. Quick hands in the paint by Smith defensively. And that's a number of times Chris King has balls deflected while he holds it down below his waist. That leaving a billion that height advantage is negated when you bring the ball down to the little guys. He and Smith are tangled up right now. Low post, trying to shove each other away. Medlin gets the inbound. Now Boyd will put it up to the free throw range, and this time he scores. His first basket of the night. And it's also one of the few times he was able to get set on the return pass to set and fire it without having a guy rushing at him. It's averaged a couple of three-pointers a game. It's 54 on the season, and this the 28th of the game. King cuts off Smith. He's played hard on both ends of the court tonight. He's got to be tired. That's right. Good quick feet by, by Chris King. That's the way you play defense against the ball hand. The only problem is he didn't need to reach in that time. Everything was great until he reached in. We gave him the buildup about his defense. Danny Ferry, 24 points on the bench. He is, uh, let's see, he is 52 points. Or is it 53? We'll do a little math work behind Tom Hammonds as far as career <laughs> You stay out of it, Elmore. <laughs> He's going to be 53 points at this point behind Tom Hammonds as far as active career ACC scores. Hammonds had 17 points and 16 rebounds earlier today. And Jordan uh, Tech lost. Smith hits the free throw. Don Sanders comes in, and there's Danny's dad. Wouldn't he love to have him in a bullet uniform, huh? I would imagine so if you look at Washington's record. Bob Ferry, the GM of the uh, Washington franchise in the NBA. Smith hits both free throws. 84, 58, 4.21 to go. Like Dan Bonner's comment about how do you negotiate with your kid? <laughs> Remind him of all the time he didn't clean up his room. There you go. <laughs> there could be an allowance. That might be the thing. No contract. He just gets a few bucks a week. Chris King has 29 points for Wake Forest. Under four minutes to go and a 24 point Duke lead. Snyder will probably come out of the Duke lineup shortly. He's going to drive on Boyd before he goes out, and Medlin gets him in route to the basket. Well, Quinn Snyder on that drive had a mind to dunk the ball, but Phil Medlin said, I don't care what the score is. That's not happening tonight, little fella. Take that weak stuff back with you. Chile comes in, and Boyd will sit down. Now Boyd, as we mentioned, played his high school ball just up the road, and he leaves with just one three-pointer tonight and four personal fouls. Abdelnabi goes out with a glad hand of his teammates. And Quinn Snyder at the free throw line with seven assists. And now seven points. Snyder is two for two for three from the line so far tonight. 
85-60. get the roll on the second one, and King has another rebound. King up high, cross courts at the Chile. Sanders, who just checked in. A lot of new faces on the Wake Forest team. This is a familiar one. He's been effective all night. Missed this time off the glass. King didn't get that one to go, and Davis has another rebound. We approach the three-minute mark. Duke content now to use some clock, save some energy, and look ahead to tomorrow. On their way to their 11th victory in 15 victory in 14 outings in ACC tournament play against Wake Forest. This is the 190th meeting between the two clubs, if you can believe that. Snyder, Davis on the baseline. Jumper's no good. It's fouled by Sanders. And Sanders just coming off the bench, and Davis has been in the game early. That's a nice matchup. Both guys are pretty quick. Especially um, Davis, he puts the ball on the floor nicely going to his right. But uh, these guys will probably meet somewhere down the line in future ACC games. And it's nice to get kind of a preview while they're still young. Davis, 6'6", six, six, freshman. And he hits the free throw. We've got the final answer for Danny Ferry in negotiating with his father if it comes to that. His mother should be his agent. Gonna get him the best deal. <laughs> There's another story in there we can't go into with 243 to play. Duke with an 86-60 lead. We'll be back at the Omni after these words. Duke lead with under three minutes to go. Here in game three of the quarterfinals, day one of the ACC tourney, the 36th edition at the Omni in Atlanta. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you in a one-sided game. Duke on their way to a romp. Been blowouts today, including the Maryland surprise over North Carolina State and the ease with which North Carolina handled Georgia Tech. This one will make three, and we look for a close game that Bob Rathman and Dan Bonner have coming up for you right after this one. King almost had a steal on the baseline, lost it out of bounds. King with 29 points. There's a look at the shooting percentage. Duke has cooled off, but still 58 plus. They will take any old day, and Wake Forest just, just not enough. Not enough shots and not enough went in. Kubek working around the perimeter to Davis. He'll take the jumper on the baseline way short. Sanders pulls out the air ball, gets it ahead to Chile. The lob for King. Would have been 31 points, and it would have been quite a way to do it, but he couldn't quite handle that pass. to go in the ball game. Duke 86, Wake Forest 60. Kubek had a thought from the three-point line, drives the paint, takes a 10-footer instead, doesn't get it. King, another rebound, the outlet to Chile. Here comes Now the kids had a great game, coming off a 34-point performance in that quadruple overtime matchup with NC State and now he has 31 points tonight so he doesn't have to hang his head at all. Monroe Buckley with his first basket. Clay Buckley makes it 88 points for Duke which is their season average. And Bob Stack's going to take Chris King out. He should deserve the applause he's getting from the folks here at the Omni. And that includes all the schools who are cheering for Chris King and his 31 points. 55 seconds to go in the ball game. Duke on top big. And there's no doubt about the Duke blowout of Wake Forest. Shooting their 58 plus from the field. Danny Ferry, another All-American type night. Wake Forest, too many turnovers. Chris King, their one bright spot with 31 points on the night. with under a minute to play. Knowing that their season's about to come to a close with a 13 and 15 record. 
They were the number seven seed. No number seven seeded team had ever won the tournament, and that obviously is going to hold true. No eight seeds ever done it either. Maryland still has that chance as Shirley scores his first basket. Half minute to play. Duke about ready to score their 23rd victory of the season. And a foul. Chile picks up the foul with 17 seconds to go. Chile seems to be pretty quick out there. That time he got a hand on the ball, but he couldn't quite budge it out of Davis's hands. You mean the off-season weight program deflect these passes a little hard. Even a few smiles on the Duke bench. Mike Krzyzewski's about the only guy who has not allowed himself one yet. Davis, free throw, no good. He almost followed it, but Medlin pulls it down. Knocked out of bounds with 13 seconds to go. Coming into this season, the Blue Devils had averaged over 27 wins a season over the last five years. And who knows how far they can go this year and maybe hit that 27 plateau again. Or more. Sanders. Final five seconds. Shealy shot is in and out, and that's going to do it. And Duke rolls big on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Two coaches shake hands at midcourt. Bob Stack's team will go home 13 and 15. Mike Shashevsky's team advances, upping their record to 23 and 6 on the season. So the final score, Duke Blue Devils, 50, uh, 88 to 64 winners. Second half of this ACC tournament game was brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Also brought to you by U.S. Air, by Pepsi, and by First Union. Our third lopsided ball game of this ACC tournament here at the Omni. Duke wins it big, 88-64 over the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Back to talk more about it after these words from Budweiser. Big surprises as Chris King had a big night, 31 points, 13 rebounds, and a couple of blocks. He was excellent on both ends of the court, and Danny Ferry, as always, it seems, 24.6 rebounds and three assists and a 50% night from the field. And he is one of the fellas that Len Elmore's got with him out on the court right now. Len? Well, thank you very much. Standing to my immediate right is uh, one of the stars of the game, Robert Bricky, and to the far right, people recognize Danny Ferry. And first, let me ask you, Robert, you had a fine overall game today. You had an opportunity maybe this afternoon to hear about the Maryland upset, and did that have any effect on your personal approach to today's game? Uh, not at all. I think our, our total team approach was the fact that we were down here to win the tournament. That's our, that's our total focus, is to win the tournament. And we know what we have to do to, uh, to be successful. And we, we came out and did those things today. Uh, we started with the defense. Now, did Coach K say anything about this, uh, this upset and maybe that Wake Forest was looking to turn you over and possibly play a control type of game? Did that have any effect on you today? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think the, the state, the outcome of the state game, any, uh, any decisions on our part. We just came out to play well, strong, and hard, and we played as a team, which, uh, which would made us very successful today. Well, playing as a team has always afforded you an opportunity to show what you're made of. And when you had an opportunity here on this breakaway, we call this the patented Robert Bricky dunk. Do you have a name for it? No, uh, it's just something I used to do in high school, and uh, every now and then I have a flashback. <laughs> well, let's move over to Danny. Thank you, Robert. And Danny, um, a lot has been said, and you've gotten about every accolade you possibly could have had. I mean, is there anything that you could have done differently coming here to Duke? Anything you may have been dissatisfied about? Well, things have turned out real well, and you know, on it, you want you want to look back and say you can improve this and improve that. But you know, the main thing is I've just really enjoyed myself, and I think I've gotten a lot out of the four years so far. Well, I'm sure many fans here have also enjoyed your performance over the four years. And let's talk about tonight's game. You seem to have your way inside. They were playing you usually with one man. Did you expect them to double you or triple you, come at you and make you give up the ball? I expected a little more double teaming and so on, but uh, I think the last game we played North Carolina, our team responded real well to that uh, with guys making cuts to the basket and so on. It was easy to find them. So that made it might have uh, shied them away from doing that a little bit. Now, you're going to be meeting North Carolina in the semifinals. I know that's always a pleasure, but are there any thoughts? Oh, you're going to be playing one of these teams. I'm sorry. I thought it was a different bracket. Well, either way, Virginia beat you um, once this year, and you've avenged that loss. But is there any thought that you have about playing Virginia or even Clemson, another team that had beaten you? Well, you know, we know that we're going to have a tough game no matter what. And the thing we have to concentrate in 
is coming in and playing uh, our kind of ball. I think the both time, you know, the games that we have lost this year, we haven't played uh, our type of defense. We haven't played real smart. We haven't done the things it takes to win. And I think, uh, you know, we just need to concentrate on ourselves more than anything else and just go from there. Well, thanks very much, Danny. And uh, like I said, you've grown a little bit since we played against each other in Cole Fieldhouse pickup games, but I appreciate your time and good luck to you. All right, good luck. Well, Brad, they got to get these brackets straight or something, <laughs> but the uh, fact of the matter is I was looking forward to a Carolina-Duke matchup. Maybe we'll get one in the final. All right. Thanks, Lan. A 24-point win for Duke. Our average margin of victory has been 20 points by the winners today. We'll come back and talk more about this one right after this. Sports Center between games. Well... The blowouts continue. True to form of the regular season, this tournament has seen a 22-point win by Maryland, 15-point win by North Carolina, and a 24-point win by Duke. And, uh, yes, there's some old scores being settled. Duke avenging its previous loss. North Carolina did the same thing, a previous loss to Georgia Tech. And Maryland avenging a season full of losses with a big win in the opening round. As, uh, as you know by now, the eight seed knocked off the number one seed, North Carolina State. Interesting enough, before we go to our final stats, well, let's go ahead and take a look at them. The U.S. Air final stats of this game just completed the third of the quarterfinals. You see the field goal uh, percentage right there. Wake Forest shot 48%. That's the highest percentage by any losing team so far today. The previous uh, two losers shot under 38%. Three-point goals, uh, just about the same, but that wasn't the difference in the game at all. It wasn't at the charity stripe either. It was uh, Duke's hustle and desire early on, and the fact that they shot a lot of short shots. The, in the the paint and layups and Danny Ferry had his way. Ferry leading scorer 24. Leitner had 15. Ricky Abdel-Nabi also in double digits. King had